Yes, so we, welcome to the webinar organized by P Eco Campus. As you might be aware, that P Eco Campus is a program at tertiary level, uh, basically organic evolution of Eco Campus uh, Eco School program. And uh, this is a series of webinars that we are planning to host as part of P Eco Campus, looking at case studies on how different Eco Campuses around the world are integrating uh, curriculum as part of learning in the campus. Today, we have two speakers from Malaysia and Ireland. Dr. Subhana Sev Palan uh, works uh, with University of uh, Technology Petronas Malaysia and is the immediate uh, past chair of the National Foundation for Environmental Education Eco Campus Committee hosted by WWF Malaysia and also the co-chair of the National Education for Sustainable Development Work Group. Subarna is also present, presently the director of the Center of Excellence in Teaching and Learning at University Technology Petronas and the founding head of the Research Center for Social Transformation for Sustainable Lifestyle. Her areas of expertise and interest are in community education for sustainable development, sustainability communication, environmental humanities and higher education for sustainability. Subona is a recipient of WWU Malaysia's Eco Champions National Lecture Award for the efforts in advocating for greater awareness amongst youth to champion sustainable development. I invite Subona to share her experience and work. Uh, Subona, the screen is yours. Okay. Thank you, Pramod, for the introduction. So I'm just going to turn off my video now and start screen share. Okay, can can my slides be viewed, please? Yes, we can see that. Okay, wonderful. So um, I'll begin. Um, so thank you very much, Pramod, and um, the team at FEE uh, for this uh, wonderful opportunity to share about the work that we're doing in Malaysia, specifically at University Technology Petronas, um, as well as WWF Malaysia. So. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, engineering education for sustainable development, the what, why and how, and how uh, we are working towards nurturing sustainability competent engineers of the future. So um, in the session today, um, I will start with uh, what's happening around us globally now with climate change and the pandemic, and then I move on to talk about how youth are the future of, uh, of many countries in the world. And then I also go on to talk about the importance of sustainability literacy, as well as what universities can and should be doing to propagate the need for uh, graduates of the future to be more sustainability competent. Yeah. So this is the very quickly uh, the outline of my session today. So I will start with context setting where I will talk about climate change and uh, the Anthropocene era that we live in currently. I'll talk about the sustainable development goals and then uh, we move on to engineering education, a very exciting field and how this field currently navigates sustainability. So I will be talking about this from uh, the perspective of uh, Malaysia. Yeah. And then I will go on to share about uh, what we are doing at University Technology Petronas. This is the institution I work at um, and how we are embedding elements of sustainable development within the curriculum and even um, beyond the curriculum. Yeah. And finally, some um, notes for us to think about. Um, Think about EESD, Engineering Education for Sustainable Development in the post-pandemic era uh, based on research that I have conducted. So basically, this is the outline of my session. I hope you um, enjoy the session. Yeah. All right. So I thought it was important for me to highlight the context of my presentation today. Uh, we are, where are we heading towards basically? Where are we heading towards? So the World Bank in the year 2019 uh, came out with a very alarming report, uh, which says that uh, climate change 
has become a global sustainability threat and it is with no doubt that climate change impacts could push close to 100 million people into poverty by the year 2030. Now, these statistics are very, very alarming because 2030 is just 10 years down the road. So who is responsible for, for what's happening at the, at the moment? So it is, is it me? Is it you? You know, um, so research indicates very, very clearly that humans have become the biggest threat to the planet. And the era that we now live in, which is the era of the Anthropocene, is the era in which humans are rapidly becoming the main cause for distress to the climate as well as to the environment. Now, you must all be very, very familiar with the United Nations and sustainable development. So there's no need for me to go into detail in this, I guess. But what I would like to highlight here is the, the need for us to balance in, in uh, to incorporate, sorry, in a balanced way, the various dimensions of sustainable development and their interlinkages. Because without this intricate balance, there isn't going to be development that is going to be sustainable. Now, for those of you uh, joining us uh, from all over the world, I think the uh, concept of sustainable development is no longer sexy, but it is a critical uh, component of our everyday life. So what is sustainable development? Basically, sustainable development is the ability to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Yeah, And this is the common definition used uh, when describing what sustainable development is. Now, um, we must all be also very familiar with the three spheres or the three pillars of sustainable development, uh, the environment, the economy and society. But there is another pillar which is equally important, which is culture. Now, together, these pillars make up um, the key components for any societies or any communities for that matter to live in harmony with the environment and nature. Uh, and in addition to the three pillars of sustainability and the element of culture, the five P's of sustainability is also really, really very important. Uh, and we have five elements here, which start with the people, with prosperity, planet, peace and partnership. Yeah. Now, this is another concept that I think uh, everybody has seen also um, moving from the MDGs to the SDGs. So the SDGs, I think we're all very familiar with the SDGs. There are 17 SDGs in total, and uh, these have come in place uh, since 2016 till the period of 2030. And prior to the SDGs, we had the Millennium Development Goals with uh, eight aims in total. Now, many say that the SDGs, 17 goals in total, 169 targets, 229 indicators, these are very, very ambitious. And um, honestly, um, I too feel that we are slightly ambitious when it comes to uh, trying to achieve these goals. But I think with concerted effort and with partnerships towards sustainability, these goals can certainly be achieved. Now, let's look at what's happening in Malaysia uh, and uh, the engineering profession. So in Malaysia, um, engineering education is a very popular program. Um, in, and in fact, you know, we, we need more engineers in Malaysia because statistics indicate that we do not have enough engineers currently to meet the development needs of the nation. Now, those who enroll for engineering programs in Malaysia, we have to um, abide by uh, the Washington Accord as well as the Engineering Accreditation Council. So what is the Washington Accord? It is an uh, international accreditation program, um, which um, accredits uh, engineering programs. So Malaysia is a signatory member of the Washington Accord. And um, what does this mean actually is, if I am a graduate from Malaysia or any country within the Washington Accord, then I would be able to work in, uh, in these uh, member countries, 
Yeah, so students who graduate from Washington Accord uh, signatories would be able to work in countries uh, that have uh, that are part of the Accord. All right. Now, both the Washington Accord and the Engineering Accreditation Council in Malaysia um, pay very close importance to graduate sustainability attributes. And what I've done here is to pick out the uh, 12 uh, graduate sustain uh, graduate attributes first. There are 12 in total. But what I'd like to highlight here is that two out of these 12 attributes are in relation to sustainable development, which is the engineering. something wrong can you hear me i was just yes. muted yeah okay we can hear you. okay great so uh there are two out of 12 graduate sustainability attributes related to uh, the engineer and society and environment and sustainability so this is very interesting because accreditation um, says that engineers of the future must have competences related to sustainable development Okay, so what is engineering education for sustainable development? So it's EESD for short. So engineering education for sustainable development basically is education that emphasizes the need for engineers to play a significant role in developing technically, environmentally, and socially responsible innovation. Yeah, so engineers of the future should not only be technically sound, but they must also be able to understand the needs of the environment and the society in whatever innovations that they uh, produce. Yeah. So uh, in this uh, slide, you see two images here. Um, and these images are taken from projects that uh, we have worked on at University Technology Petronas. So uh, on the left hand side, you would see uh, you can see a group of students, both male and female, working together uh, with the installation of solar panels at an indigenous community. And uh, on the right hand side, you see uh, more students of uh, engineering background um, discussing with the village, indigenous village uh, youth leader on a portable washing machine that they have. Uh, developed for the village. Yeah, so I will talk more about this as I proceed with my presentation. All right, University Technology Petronas. So I'm not sure how many of uh, the 254 people listening in now are familiar with this university, uh, but we are one of the top private universities in Malaysia and uh, we are based in the state of Perak. Perak is about two and a half hours from the capital, Kuala Lumpur. Now, University Technology Petronas is an engineering, technology, science-based uh, university, and we have just introduced um, a new program, a new undergraduate program called uh, Bachelor for Business Management. So we are slowly um, inculcating uh, more comprehensive programs uh, within the campus. Now, um, we are wholly owned by Petronas. Petronas is the national oil company. Now, the university was uh, established in the year 1997 uh, and has a built up area of about uh, 400 acres. We also have about 600 acres of uh, forest preserve. Uh, where we currently host uh, the academic complex and also the R&D park. So there are a lot of interesting, happen uh, interesting things happening on campus at the moment uh, with regards to sustainable development. And um, over the past, uh, since 2007, late 2017 actually, sustainable development uh, and the SDGs feature very, very prominently in our academic as well as research work. Yeah. So uh, these are some uh, very quickly uh, an overview of, um, you know, some basic statistics about the university. Um, I will share these slides with the organizer later so you can have a look at this. Um, okay, so we are in rankings, international rankings and so on. 
um, and uh, we capitalize on our partnerships with the industry uh, to run our programs and uh, we have um, uh, quite a long uh, industrial internship program which lasts for seven months. It's one of the longest programs, uh, internship programs uh, in comparison to other universities in Malaysia. So this seven month uh, internship program really prepares students to be uh, competent for the workplace. Yeah, And uh, we um, have this UTP well-rounded student model uh, with seven uh, competencies uh, that students must achieve uh, upon graduation. Yeah. All right. And uh, we have a very prominently uh, featured corporate social responsibility as a key competence for students to have uh, via the transformation journey model. Yeah. Uh, and the goal, the aim of us. Uh, developing this model is to enable students uh, to aspire to be more uh, well-rounded and also to become global modern citizens. All right, um, in the year 2015, um, I conducted a study uh, on uh, a case study uh, on work going on in the campus with regards to engineering education for sustainable development. And um, this research has guided much of the uh, work that uh, I have been doing on campus with regards to uh, engineering education for sustainable development. So what we are trying to do is actually move away from engineering education about sustainability to engineering education as sustainability. Yeah? So there are several things that need to be looked into uh, while we transition uh, from engineering education about sustainability to engineering education as sustainability and curriculum definitely features very, very prominently in this framework. Now, EESD at a glance uh, at UTP. So I know this uh, webinar session today is focused on curriculum uh, and how to integrate sustainability within the curriculum. But I also feel that uh, it is important that we look at the whole institution because um, looking at curriculum uh, separately uh, may not entirely be sustainable, so to say. Yeah? So um, in addition to curriculum and pedagogy and student experience and research, I feel this multi-pronged approach of infusing sustainability uh, literacies and competences within the engineering program is the way to go uh, when we talk about developing engineers who are more uh, what you call a sustainability uh, competent, yeah? And uh, the work that we do uh, at UTP embodies these elements, uh, particularly the principles and the philosophies of education for sustainable development. So very quickly, um, at a glance, first we look at how the academic ecosystem of the uh, university has been developed in compliance to ESD methodologies. So um, as you can see in the slide here, we have got a very uh, systemic um, education ecosystem uh, where we look at very close, we look very closely into research informed teaching and we aspire for all our academics to be also researching uh, matters related to teaching, learning and assessment. Um, so that this kind of um, research is able to improve uh, student experiences as well as student uh, learning and student performance. Now, at the same time, we also subscribe to active learning methodologies in the classroom where uh, the focus is no longer one way, but two ways. Active learning features very prominently and within this active learning ecosystem, our focus is also on immersive teaching and learning as well as blended learning methodologies because this is the future direction that we need to be taking post pandemic era as well. So besides uh, the academic ecosystem, um, as I mentioned earlier, 
Research also is very, very important at University Technology Petronas and sustainability and the SDGs feature very prominently within the research that we do uh, on campus. So as you can see, we have two main themes, uh, research themes on campus, which is smart communities as well as um, energy sustainability. So I am affiliated with the Institute uh, for Self-Sustainable Living which is one of the six institutes currently working within this smart communities and energy sustainability research ecosystem. All right, and uh, we also have um, a very rich culture of corporate social responsibility uh, on campus. So this is our, uh, this is the impact that uh, we have created as a caring global university with strong social values for the well-being of the society. And uh, our USR, University Social Responsibility uh, umbrella is made up of uh, three pillars, which is the education pillar, the socioeconomic pillar, as well as the environmental pillar. And um, to date, uh, USR at UTP um, has been led by students uh, where they work on uh, projects related to, uh, eat, uh, you know, either one or all three pillars. And of course, these projects are also uh, developed with sustainability and the SDGs in mind. So some statistics on our impact so far, uh, we have, we started this, I think about two to three years ago, um, USR activities, um, and we have impacted about uh, 400 and sorry, 4,257 students have been involved uh, with over 300 um, academic staff, as well as non-academic staff, uh, with 219 projects completed in over, uh, including 27 projects overseas, yeah? All right, so uh, what I'm sharing with, me, with you now is some examples of how uh, we have integrated sustainability within the formal undergraduate engineering curriculum um, so in UTP, uh, we make it compulsory for our students to take um, the course called Introduction to Oil and Gas and Sustainable Development. And uh, one of the learning outcomes in this course is actually uh, for students to be able to uh, understand what sustainable development is, what its principles are. Uh, we also talk about education for sustainable development, as well as make connections to how these things are important for students to later become more responsible engineers uh, in the field. Now, Introduction to Oil and Gas and Sustainable Development is um, a course that I teach uh, every semester. So it is, um, it's usually a very full class with over six to 700 students. Um, and due to the uh, pandemic situation, we have now gone fully online with this. So it's very interesting to see um, changes happening uh, in relation to how we engage with uh, students uh, on this course. Yeah, so besides introduction to oil and gas and sustainable development, we also have uh, subjects called MPU subjects. Uh, MPU stands for Mata Pelajaran Umum. Uh, in the Malay language, and if I can loosely translate it, uh, these are general uh, subjects that students take. So one of these, uh, two of these are holistic perspectives on sustainability, as well as ethics and social responsibility. So these three courses are uh, what you call uh, formally embedded within the undergraduate engineering curriculum. Not to say that these are the only three courses uh, available for students to take throughout their four years of the engineering degree. We do embed elements of sustainability within selected courses as well, and it can come out as, uh, you know, uh, small topics or even to uh, small topics within a chapter uh, of a week's lecture, or it can go on to maybe even themes incorporated within these modules as well. Okay, now um, what you saw just now was an example, uh, three examples of how we embed sustainability within the formal curriculum. Uh, now I share with you uh, the service-based learning approach that we take to 
uh, infusing elements of sustainability within the curriculum uh, using um, using uh, experiential learning um, as the backbone. Yeah? So the first case study that I would like to share with you is the Rural Electrification for Indigenous Community Wellbeing Projects. Now, we started these projects in the year 2015. Um, and um, to date, we have completed four such, uh, sorry, one, two, three such projects. Um, it has not been easy because, you know, we are trying to bring uh, in uh, electricity into rural communities, uh, specifically indigenous communities, which have not uh, been privileged enough to get access to electricity. And um, in, this, uh, in this sense, um, Partnerships are important because partners bring in funding, partners bring in extra hands to help. So together, we work as a community along with the Indigenous uh, community members and we empower them to uh, look after the facilities uh, once we have uh, installed them uh, at the village. Now, in these pictures here, you see uh, students of UTP, staff of UTP, as well as community members engaged together uh, in processes related to uh, erecting the solar panels at the indigenous village. So we also have students working on uh, assembling the panels in the campus, and then we move these uh, panels to the site uh, at the village uh, and put it up. All right. Now, besides our projects, uh, besides our rural electrification projects, uh, we also have rural sanitation and sustainable lifestyle uh, uh, programs conducted with the indigenous community as well. And uh, the purpose of us running these these programs is to better understand um, how uh, the indigenous community as well as non non indigenous community can work together towards finding um, uh, solutions, yeah, towards finding solutions that can uh, better handle environmental issues. And uh, believe me when I tell you, there is a lot we can learn from these communities. All right, a third case study uh, is the hydroponics system uh, for vegetable cultivation, which we have also uh, installed in the same village where we installed the uh, solar paneling system. So. Uh, last one, uh, case study four, this is the portable washing machine uh, that we developed for the community. So basically, the reason I'm highlighting this is because uh, students were involved in these projects. They conceptualized the ideas from start to finish, and this gave them very good experience um, in uh, what you call uh, this, these projects run for two semesters. And it definitely, you know, put them through a lot of tests, these students, yeah, because they not only had to think about how to get funding uh, to run the projects, but at the same time, they also had to look at how they were going to, to design the, the innovation and then to, to erect the innovation there. And then uh, upon uh, putting these innovations up, how to maintain this and how to then empower and hand over the projects to the communities for the communities then to take over. Very good learning experience, if you ask me. So uh, these are some um, reflections that I got from students who were involved in such projects. Um, and what I found that uh, what I found is that uh, through such projects, they were able to uh, improve on their social skills. They were able to improve on their critical and problem solving skills. They were able to enhance their leadership skills. And most importantly, they were able to also uh, develop civic as well as social responsibility skills. So I'm particularly very, very proud of these students because not all students want to take up the challenge of working on uh, service-based learning courses, uh, sorry, service-based learning projects that are related to the environment pillar. So these bunch of students are really great for uh, wanting to take on this, uh, this tough, uh, you know, these tough projects. So um, now we move on to um, more uh, 
less less formal uh, approaches that we, we we take on campus uh, to infuse sustainability. Um, what we have here is the uh, UTP Eco Project. So this is actually our um, how do I say this? This is our introduction to the SEE program actually uh, uh, through WWF Malaysia, and um, we call ourselves the UTP Eco Project. Uh, and the aim of UTP Eco Project is to um, uh, enable students uh, to develop bottom-up solutions to sustainability issues happening on campus. Yeah, so UTP Eco Project is actually a joint initiative between several student clubs, um, and uh, these student clubs are then supported by uh, staff. Uh, on campus, uh, various staff departments, uh, which include the HSE Department, Health, Safety and Environment, uh, the Maintenance Department, Estate Management, uh, Student Support Services, and most importantly, WWF Malaysia. Yeah? So this is the committee. Now, uh, it's made up of students. This is student-led, this is bottom-up. Uh, so we have a student committee and of course we also have a staff committee shadowing the student committee but the bulk of the work is done by the student committee all right um, so the purpose of us developing um, uh, the UTP eco project was actually uh, to to create greater awareness on campus to the whole campus community in fact on why UTP should move towards becoming a more sustainable campus. And I'm very, very happy to share uh, the first activity that uh, uh, led us uh, to um, receiving a bronze award this year in January. Uh, and this uh, initiative was the Skip the Straw initiative, um, which we conceptualized based on the seven step methodology. And uh, this uh, Skip the Straw was actually a campaign that uh, we introduced in April, uh, February to April 2019 last year. Uh, we piloted it from February to April 2019. Uh, we got a lot of good support from the campus community staff and students, as well as um, the campus uh, cafeteria operators. Yeah. So, a concerted effort, a collaboration between the various entities um, led us to uh, conceptualize Wait. this project. I don't understand why this is happening. Uh, you're okay? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, okay, because I just heard someone talk just now. Okay, good that you can hear me. Thank you, Pramod. So some of the um, uh, observed uh, impact of the uh, FEE Eco Campus Program at UTP uh, is an improved environmental impact on campus. Uh, there is greater involvement with local community as well as other institutions and organizations. So uh, our UTP Skip the Straw initiative actually opened up a lot of opportunities for my students to uh, get engaged with other institutions as well as with WWF Malaysia with all the opportunities that they give us. Um, and of course, uh, moving on, uh, some of the other observed impact was financial savings for our uh, cafe operators. Uh, with reduced uh, plastic straws. Uh, we also had a lot of student entrepreneurs uh, coming up uh, with initiatives um, of selling uh, metal straws on campus as well um, for the lack of plastic straws. And uh, basically, um, this, this project is very close to my heart because this is the first project we initiated on campus and uh, we got good support uh, for this project. Yeah, so. Yeah, this is the bronze award that we got uh, from WWF Malaysia, right? So this is the uh, this is the student community along with uh, Miss Maslina, who helps us very very much uh, with all our eco campus efforts uh, at UTP. Now, um, I just want to share some things uh, with regard to um, how. Things are changing now for us on campus, you know, uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic. 
So since March 2020, um, along along with uh, you know many countries all over the world, we also went into lockdown, and this has affected a lot of work that's ongoing on campus uh, with relate in relation to you know our UTP Eco Project initiative. So um, we are hoping things get better soon. Um, but um, I would like to share a study that uh, we conducted. Uh, in the year 2018, if I'm not, 2017, on how engineering education for sustainable development can benefit from uh, moving online. Yeah. So this research actually is very relevant now uh, in the post-pandemic era as well. So what are the things we looked at is how, um, how to effectively teach sustainability within a multidisciplinary um, online context. And I'll just go straight to some of the uh, issues that we explored through this study. So the first thing was interdisciplinarity as a strength or weakness for the course, uh, changing views on or understanding of sustainability during the development and delivery of the course, how teaching of sustainability online can and should be done, um, what are the notions, the different notions of change within teaching practice as a result of involvement in courses other than sustainability projects? And lastly, what are some of the uh, impacts of different cultural backgrounds of participants, tutors, facilitators, etc., within an online environment? Yeah, so uh, this study was done together with colleagues from the University of Nottingham in the UK. And um, yeah, these are the areas basically. And um, these are some of the findings from the study. And um, I'm not going to go in detail, uh, but I would just like to highlight one thing, which is a paradigm shift uh, in understanding uh, how sustainability uh, is to be taught within an online environment is very, very important. Uh, uh, if we are going to go uh, you know, into blended learning models or hybrid learning models in the post pandemic era. So um, I'm happy that, you know, uh, we are experimenting new ways of teaching sustainability at UTP, uh, whether we have been forced to do so because of the pandemic or not. But I think uh, going online now is the way forward. And as engineering educators or as educators you know anywhere teaching any subject for that matter i think we need to be more um, open to experimenting uh, for the greater good of our students and for the greater good of the planet so um, with this i would like to end my session and i would like to thank pramod and the fee team very much for giving me the opportunity to share about some of the work going on and utp um, as well as WWF Malaysia uh, with regards to uh, sustainability and uh, our FEE Eco Campus program. So thank you so much, Pramod, and I would like to now pass the session over to you. Thank you, Subhan. If you can just stop uh, sharing. Uh, there are yes. a couple of questions that uh, uh, participants have asked, uh, so okay. would like to uh, address uh, them to you. So the first sure. one is, if you can share some details about what is Washington Accord. This question has been asked by Judith uh, from our Tanzania uh, team, because they would like to know more about it as they are uh, planning to have Eco Campus program in Tanzania. Okay, sure. Thank you, Judith, for the question. So, uh, Washington Accord, basically, Judith, is an, uh, is an organization that accredits engineering programs. So, um, you, can, you can just Google up Washington Accord and you will see um, the different member countries that are within this accord. So, basically, if uh, it has to be country level, Judith, uh, it is uh, country driven. And uh, what it means is if your country is a member of the Washington Accord, a member or what is also known as signatory of the Washington Accord, that means your students, your engineering graduates can then work in any of the member countries that are within this accord. 
Thank you, uh, Subhadra. The second question uh, you hinted about the research is that uh, what kind of uh, adaptation you have done uh, due to the pandemic uh, in teaching learning in your campus? Okay, so for us now, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned in March 2019, uh, sorry, March 2020, we all went into lockdown. Uh, very briefly, we were all starting uh, to go back to, to 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 campus to work and to deliver sessions, but without our students present. Um, what has happened is that uh, we have now ventured into um, fully online teaching and learning. And um, very, very uh, excitingly, many of my colleagues um, and I have ventured into video lectures, video-based lectures, and uh, we feel that video-based lectures, um, you know, um, well, it does come with these challenges because it takes a lot of time to prepare and things like that. But um, sometimes we have no choice. We have to do this. We are not able to see our students face to face. Now, this has become um, quite uh, interesting as well because just last semester also, I taught a subject called professional communication skills where I also embed uh, elements of sustainability and I get my engineering students to present about sustainability issues. and. I would normally uh, do this as a face-to-face -face session, but this time around doing it online, doing online presentations with students was challenging, um, especially in getting them to explain to me about concepts related to sustainability. But um, I think there are areas in which where we can improve further uh, by adopting uh, more uh, friendly models uh, for teaching uh, within an online environment. Um, I, I think I can I can talk more about this after one more semester of teaching where I get more more input <laughs> uh, of problems. You know, uh, we we just started anyway. You know, we were thrown into an online learning situation, but uh, we have risen above it. Um, and doing lectures with large groups can be intimidating to me as a lecturer as well because you don't know. You know, are these guys really listening or not? We have 265 participants on this webinar now, but are all the 265 people actually engaged? So that's 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 challenging as well. So no particular methodology used is just purely logic and doing our best to engage with the students and video lectures uh, seem to be doing it for me at least. I find it very useful and my students have also uh, given very favorable feedback to this. Yeah. Thank you, Suparna, for that detailed answer. And I think uh, with experience only, we'll be able to reflect and uh, say that well, yeah. how we can go about it. Uh, the, there is another question on uh, from Francis Loke. He's asking, what is the process for working with stakeholders uh, slash mm -hmm. beneficiaries for the engineering students' projects? Are they involved with stakeholders' group engagement and prototyping alongside uh, these stakeholders? Okay. Um, okay. There are many. There are many points in uh, Francis's question. So when he means stakeholder, uh, I need to understand what uh, from where he is coming, because for our projects we engage multiple stakeholders. So our key stakeholder is the community. The community that is going to benefit from the innovation that we place in uh, in the particular village, for example. So now we are talking about indigenous communities. Uh, we are not going in there to impose anything on them, but rather we want to understand what they need first and then suggest to them innovations that we can put in place that, that are sustainable. So um, I'll just give you an example of how we would usually approach such communities. So um, I'll give you the example of the, that village that I have been working with since uh, the year 2015. Now, um, what we did is we first engaged with the uh, indigenous, uh, uh, it's called Jakoa, Jabatan Kewajikan Orang Asli, which is actually the agency that looks after the welfare of the indigenous people uh, in Malaysia. So we approached the local authorities and we asked them uh, for permission to go into the village because you cannot simply enter an indigenous village without permission. We got the permissions uh, and then uh, an officer escorted us to the village uh, and then uh, we we met the village head first. We met the village head and uh, we 
we had uh, buy-in meetings with the village head, not one, not two, many, many buy-in meetings to earn their trust because um, trust is very important when we talk about these kind of partnerships, especially when we want to empower these communities to then uh, look after the innovations that we place there. So I would say our key, key stakeholder here is the community. And of course, then um, other key stakeholders definitely would be our collaborators or funders. So we have been very fortunate because um, we have been um, uh, supported by Petronas. Uh, we have been supported by Chemfield um, um, that have generously given us funding to run such projects. Um, and of course, our students, you know, uh, without students, uh, these projects cannot run because students are the one conceptualizing and uh, what you call putting in place these innovations. And consultation is done with the community leaders, the community elders and the community youth uh, when we design uh, and when we develop the innovation. Yeah, so it's not something that we think uh, that we think should be put in the village. Therefore, we put it in the village. No. Uh, what we do is we carry out uh, we carry out a needs analysis. We look at it from a very holistic angle. What the community needs, we look at the environment around there as well because we don't want to be going around chopping trees uh, unnecessarily to erect a solar panels. So all these must be taken into consideration as well. It's very interesting to be involved in such projects, really. <laughs> Thank you, Subhad. I, I think uh, that makes sense also. And one of the things uh, that we are trying to strengthen and highlight also is uh, the linkages with community of the eco campuses, and which is important because personally, I also believe, and which is, uh, uh, I think, uh, is one of the reasons for higher education uh, institution is to engage with the issues or problems within uh, the community or the society they are situated in. The other question uh, is about uh, like how do you integrate uh, assessment, which is also part of uh, important part of curriculum integration into uh, like how do you integrate sustainability in your assessment uh, of students, which is an important uh, aspect when, of teaching and learning. Sure, sure. Yes, uh, assessment is definitely very, very important. Um, okay, so I'll give you an example of the uh, assessment we do for the uh, community projects that I shared with you, you know, the service-based learning project. So for the longest time, uh, we assessed uh, only uh, from a supervisor's perspective, uh, but then we then uh, realized that this may not be very sustainable, so to say. So we had uh, what you call a, a multi-pronged approach to assessment where we now not only take into account uh, the supervisor's feedback, but we also take into account uh, students' reflections students comment on uh, uh, working as a group and we have recently integrated uh, getting stakeholder feedback that means the community that was involved uh, as the beneficiary uh, is also able to uh, comment uh, or assess uh, the, the the projects uh, done by the students so this is 360 degree kind of assessment so to say and I think it's very, very important in service-based learning, uh, service-based learning uh, assessments as such. Uh, thank you, uh, Subanda. And there is a question from Bahasa. He's asking about that. How do you? How about safety programs at UTP? And would like to know how did you integrate the concept of safety in sustainability issues in campus? Safety, as in, I'm assuming health, safety, and environment. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. No, I, I don't teach those aspects, so I don't think I should comment on this. Uh, so, I, I, I can't answer that question basically because uh, what I teach in um, Introduction to Oil and Gas and Sustainable Development is, um, if I did not mention this earlier, uh, we have uh, we run this course. Um, uh, with uh, several lecturers uh, working on, on on delivering several topics. So um, it's called, um, what you call, um, team teaching, so to say. It's team teaching, so to say, yeah? So yes, we have health, safety, and environment. That is a different topic, a uh, different course altogether, which I don't teach on. So I, I don't think it's right for me to comment on what is integrated and not integrated in that subject, because I don't know really.
Uh, but Thank please you, feel Subhan. free. Yeah, yes. feel feel uh, feel free to write to me. You know, uh, I'll be happy to to make you to make the connections with the relevant people on campus if you're interested. Okay. Uh, the other, uh, the, I think the last question we are, because we are nearing the end of the the webinar and uh, is basically uh, does the university encourage innovation towards the e, uh, towards ESD, for example, mm -hmm. producing products which promote sustainability. So, yes. Uh, definitely promote. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in in my presentation just now, uh, research is uh, very very much important uh, on campus, and uh, the research that we do is um, based on principles of sustainability. Um, uh, but you mentioned ESD just now, right? Education for sustainable development. Yeah, yeah. So that is uh, growing. I would say it is growing. Uh, I'm one of those uh, people on campus who is, you know, always going about talking about the importance of ESD. Uh, and we have a, uh, what you call, well, I founded the Center for Social Transformation for Sustainable Lifestyles on campus, where we had an education pillar there, uh, looking at uh, ESD related projects and all. Uh, many of the projects we have uh, successfully completed, uh, you know, uh, curriculum integration projects, basically, and uh, I'm happy to say that many of these um, projects have uh, now uh, gone on to uh, develop into larger scale uh, initiatives like the UTP Eco Campus uh, project for, for one. And um, beyond that, now we have a center called Center for Social Innovation, where education for sustainable development now is one of the key pillars in the center. So slowly step by step we are going uh, definitely there is a lot more for us to do in terms of ESD research because we are an engineering based university we are not a comprehensive university we do not have an education faculty but we do have very very enthusiastic researchers with uh, backgrounds or with PhDs in education who are uh, you know who are very interested and very optimistic about integrating ESD uh, within the curriculum and within the campus in general. So do wish us luck, please, because we need all the luck that we can get. All the best for that, uh, Subarna. And uh, Thank you. Uh, with this, I, uh, we come to the end of this webinar. Thank you for uh, your sharing your work at the presentation. And uh, it is interesting. And uh, we got nice comments uh, in the chat box of oh, people okay. uh, inspired, especially by the service learning case study that you shared. And oh, I think okay. that is also an important way of uh, integrating curriculum uh, with the uh, with sustainability issues and getting children closer to problem solving of the and issues with the community, which is, I, I think, uh, links with all the three pillars of uh, sustainability when we talk about uh, issue, society, economy, and uh, uh, environment as such, and also builds their skill for future. So, uh, th as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, this is a series of uh, webinars and unfortunately, Socha, uh, who the other speaker had a technical problem and she was not able to log in after, even after using two or three separate uh, email IDs. So it was a, but we will reschedule her presentation over uh, next two months and uh, uh, we will let you know, please keep us uh, like keep following the, uh, our, uh, social media and website to know more about uh, the other presentations that uh, we have. So thank you, Subarna, for your uh, time and uh, effort okay. to share the work at case studies, uh, kind of. No thank you very much. Thank you, Pramod, and uh, thank you very much to FEE for uh, allowing me to be the inaugural speaker in your FEE uh, webinar series. Um, thank you so much, and I hope to join uh, you know, future sessions as well.